Our next speaker is Professor Felix Wong. I'm very glad to introduce him because he's actually one of my mentors when I started doing the OMG in Hong Kong. He's actually the co-joint professor of the University of New South Wales in Australia. He's currently the chairman of the China, Australia, Asia Pacific Association of Minimally Invasive Gynecologic Oncologists and also the foundation chairman of the China, Australia, Asia Pacific Forum of Minimally Invasive Surgery. Professor Wong is renowned for his contribution um, to the medical education in the Asia Pacific region. And he has actually received numerous awards from different uh, places. To name a few, one of these is Guangdong Friendship Award in 2003, Endoscopic Award in 2009, 2005, Medical Ambassador from the Gynecologic Endoscopy Group of the Chinese Medical Association, Ho Chi Minh um, City Bench, Bench Award in 2006, and the Endos Award in Medical Science and Technology in 2009. So I guess most of people actually know Felix very well. I think without further ado, we should ask Felix to uh, start his talk. He's going to talk to us on something different area, which is on the Fahai Fu in the Hong Kong SAL, and, uh, and also the um, potential of the Hai Fu. Who is Felix Wong? Good night, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm going to share my, um, my little experience in focus ultrasound, my experience in Hong Kong, and talk about the potential of the focus ultrasound surgery development. I'm proud to be with this group of eight page, and uh, we have achieved a lot at uh, Professor, um, uh, <clears throat> Professor Lee have said, is that uh, we have our own journal, we have meeting every year and we have workshop and I'm proud to be involved with this uh, webinar meeting. Now, like Professor Lee have said, we went to China for meeting and we learned about focus ultrasound surgery. There's the high flu at the meeting and we started to form interest in this type of surgery. We find there's a new surgical direction of course, it's, it won't earn you a Nobel Prize. That changed the medicine. But we did find that there's a new surgical direction, which just like in those days when I, we are starting the minimally invasive surgery, the clinical advantages of the focused ultrasound surgery are now well recognized. There's no bleeding. It doesn't use a knife to cut. We conserve the uterus. There's the organ that's important. And um, most impressively is the patient go home. The next day for us in Hong Kong, they go home the same day. So the effectiveness, when you look at various journal and the more you look at it, the more in the literature, the more journal, they report the use, the effectiveness of high food in our gynecology. For example, this well-known multi-center trial published in 2018 by Professor Lan, and it's a, a so-called ideal study. It compared the hysterectomy as well as malmectomy with high food. There are also many studies from various journals, like Journal of Minimally Invasive Gynecology, like uh, Journal of Hyperthermia, and not only talking about the effectiveness of high flu compared to laparoscopic malmectomy in fibroids, showing that it's more effective and more safe and also quicker recovery that's well recognized. Not only that, the ovarian function, the sexual function of the high flu comparatively is better, especially shortly after surgery. It changed the concept of our surgery. Instead of multi doctors doing the operation, a single doctor can operate. Instead of the patient puts to sleep, knowing nothing about the surgery, you can see the patient is talking to the nurse very comfortably. Of course, knowing that there's such a new surgical approach, one will not miss 
have to visit the center in Chongqing called Haifu Company. You'll be impressed by some of the facility there, especially this site, where you can see a big screen showing that various center operating Haifu surgery being supervised by the experienced staff there. And they are monitoring some center doing the Haifu study. So they are not only selling the machine, they are providing education to many of the doctors who want to learn. And I have the chance to talk to the engineering and the inventor, Professor Wong, and about the machine, about the good points, and about various things, learning about the surgery. I was lucky to be able to travel to China very often. You see, these are the places where I have been to, where each of the center operate more than 500, even up to a thousand cases nowadays a year. So these are the center in Chongqing, in Suining, in Guangzhou, in Shanghai. There are so many places now in China. They are operating so many cases in gynecology for fibroid adenomyosis. I was lucky to be able to learn this new surgical technique and um, with the experienced doctor. As you can see, when I learn all this technique, I find that the patient are enjoying themselves looking at the iPhone. So quite different from what we are doing, even we are doing a wonderful minimally invasive surgery. So when I came back to Hong Kong, starting to uh, look into build up the center in Hong Kong, with great difficulty after a while, you can see I set up a center in the commercial area, just you have just seen. And this my center in Hong Kong, just a quick video to show the inside of my high food center. So a simple room of around 300 square feet, you can have the room like that to operate on a patient. Not only that, I will be able to use the facility to teach the doctor who don't know how to operate high food and come to either sit next to me or sit outside when there's too many people. They are watching the screen, the same screen what I'm looking at and they can see through a one-way glass and so they can operate and see how we operate inside the high food center. Inside the center, not only I have patient and um, or I have, uh, sorry, doctors learning from me. I also initially set up a 360 degree camera, which I'm using the Zoom, hopefully allow people outside to watch what I'm doing. That's what I'm proceeding for the, uh, using the internet platform to teach. For people who are interested, you can go to the journal of our A page. That's the Journal of uh, Gynecologist and Minimal Invasive Therapy. Early this year, 2020, I talk about the facility and the setup of my high food center. Now, also you will see I have different color in the center. It seems that certain color make the patient more comfortable. Also, you can see that my center allow not only the patient, my doctor to come in, their relative are coming in to join them. I'm confident that this surgery is so non-invasive, the relative won't stop me from operating because when they see what I'm doing, they are convinced that they're either the, this one is the daughter are safe in my hand doing having this surgery. You can see this patient holding an iPhone, just not what I have learned from other center, that the patient, when they are awake, they can do what they want to do, talking to friends, but I don't want them to do that. It will sometimes they move. Now, so my center is different from others that we don't have any blood loss because of this non-invasive surgery. There's no need to a large storage room and for our changing because no change room required. Doesn't need to a male, female change room and doesn't need a storage space for the instrument we are, we are operating. So 
we don't need a sterilization rule. The most important later on, what I'm talking about is the no medical waste. In those days, before I started to uh, work with high full surgery, and what we learn about pathology is when we remove the uterus, we cut it open, we say, wow, there's the adenomyosis we are dealing with. But now, because the high full in every patient, we did the MRI, we know exactly how many fibroids they are, how big they are, and why we may fail in some of the surgery, and why we may fail in my high full surgery. We know more about adenomyosis. They're very, these are the dispersed adenomyosis or nodular adenomyosis. We learn but much better about the pathology of fibroid and adenomyosis. So we started to make diagnosis of fibroid adenomyosis with MRI. In earlier day, because we are just starting new, patients learn about high full non-invasive surgery. Those patients who doesn't want to operate have a very big fibroid or our doctor refer us, those patients who they couldn't operate and to come to have high full treatment. You can see there are some patients with uh, multiple uh, myomatosis, multiple fibroid, a fibroid of 16, 15 centimeters. Now I'm working in a clinic that doesn't allow patients to stay for 24 hours. And in some of these patients in the, our early cases, we have not, and but not have to operate on them. I was told, you better be careful when you set up the, the surgery and there's a new approach and the word of warning is be careful. There could be shock around waiting. So over the nine months, when we first started in September, year 2019, and until June the 20th, you can see in Hong Kong, we have the problem of social unrest and when we're starting to think we are better and the coronavirus is coming. So you can see we are under great difficulty, but we never stop. Despite all that, patients still come. Even the hospital are closing because of the virus. People are still coming. Now, so I cannot share with you because of a small number of cases, my experience, but I can tell you that I'm proud to be able to provide a service for some of the patients. Now, uh, there's one patient, for example, this young lady of 31, she's an athlete for Hong Kong, and I operated on her five years ago for myoma, which is X centimeter. Five years later, she have a recurrence of the fibroid with heavy bleeding, and the fibroid reached nine centimeter because she is a smart woman, so you can't take any medicine or some medicine uh, that may be affecting her, uh, her sports. And she was also uh, ready for another competition, even though I can perform another malmectomy for her, but she rather try this high full surgery. And this the MRI before the operation, this around nine centimeter, 9.5. And then after four, four months, uh, 9.8, after four months, another MRI showed that it's already shrunk to 6.5 and her bleeding become normal. Her mother is quite pleased during the surgery uh, when she received this high food surgery. Another successful example is for adenomyosis. And this lady with a big adenomyoma with this pills, adenomyoma, she had pain score of nine. And after high food treatment, four months later, the activities of the adenomyosis have already disappeared. Her pain score is 0.5. She's quite well. And she really enjoyed having this. At least for the 50 cases I've operated, I saved the uterus or my, my team, not just myself. So, they have adenomyosis, they have fibroid, and they all have the operation done. 
Now, not only that, we do have patients to come to us because my colleague won't operate on them. And there's another lady with cerebral vascular accident, carot carotid artery thrombosis, that's nine months ago, and due to overtaking of a estrogen continuously for a few years, and then she developed thrombosis in the artery. And nobody want to operate on her because of the risk of perioperative stroke. So after nine months, when the risks are low, I offer her the high food treatment. She was all right, up overnight stayed in the hospital. So she was very pleased, uh, she was very pleased with the operation. Nevertheless, I mean, there are cases of possible failure despite my small number. For example, this lady with um, adenomyosis, she received already three months GNRH. You can see the activities of the adenomyosis is much less. Despite my high food treatment and another three months of GNRH, when I stopped the GNRH four months later, despite she said the pain score is much better, but I can see the activities of the adenomyosis starting around the endometrium. Another lady successful treatment, however, I would expect she will have a recurrent because it seems that surrounding the, those ablated area, there are activities going on. Again, despite the treatment have been successful, it's incomplete in this lady. Now, to further develop the high food treatment, the future of high food treatment in gynecology, in my opinion, I think this non-invasive surgery will be welcomed by many of our patients. We need to make sure that it further reduces the risk to our doctors and our patients from the conventional surgery. Now, more important is to the need to improve our safety, the safety of the patient and the effectiveness of the focus surgery, as well as expand the use of high flu in cancer, benign cysts, and other applications. Finally, it's really the impact on environmental. I will briefly, quickly come going through this. We all know during surgery, we may cut our hands. That's our risk. We may risk of HIV and hepatitis. This we all avoid by having focused ultrasound surgery. This too, we present a crater with myomectomy. We sometimes have heavy bleeding risk to the patient. Then we also avoid. Now, how about the safety of the patient? Can the target, I'm sorry for those who have not operated on high flow, but I hope they understand that this MRI scan, usually ultrasound have difficulty to see where is the extent of the fibroid, where is the endometrium. For young lady, when we want to serve, uh, save the endometrium, don't want to burn it, the incorporation of the MRI pictures onto the ultrasound will help us a lot to know where we target at, how far away we are from the endometrium. Now, in this way, we can help to save the patient from endometrial damage or the damage of the brow when we are too close to the brow. So the development of this MRI incorporating in our high full uh, ultrasound pictures is very important. The important thing, however, is the nowadays is still manual to be able to adjust it. So with development of artificial intelligence technology, I think the automatic targeting and the tracing of the uh, ultrasound pictures by MRI pictures will be feasible. So with more 3D development, we will be able to see each segment of the um, fibroid that we are burning. We can see exactly how many, for example, using micro bubble, able to label each of the layer, we can see which layer, which are the area we want to target from the ultrasound because ultrasound will be very difficult to find which area you are still weak, have not been able to ablate. Now, skin burn is another area that we worry about and we worry about the nerve uh, being burned and the overheating. Now, one of the 
monitoring I'm using, you can see is infrared. When area that is overheating and it will be alert by the tracing. And I find that patient, when they reach a high temperature uh, over here, there's a high temperature up to around 37 to 40, patients starting to complain of pain, sometimes uh, nerve pain. Now for the 50 patient, while I'm monitoring with this infrared, there have not been anyone who have nerve problem or skin burn problem. And not only that, I'm working on the research area or to calculate the algorithm, trying to locate, reflect the internal temperature using infrared monitoring and other device. So hopefully we'll be just like um, MRI guided um, HIFU, we'll be able to assess the internal temperature that will avoid burning the bowel and the nerve. Now, the other thing is the effectiveness, the high flow for the time being, we are monitoring the using ultrasound guided. We can see the grayscale changes when we are hitting on the uh, fiber. And in order to assess whether we have completely ablated the percentage of abrasion of the fibroid, we use micro bubble. Now, for those who are not using uh, learning high food, the micro bubble is 5,000 times smaller than those visible bubble we see. And they circulate around the capillary and well, the ultrasound will be able to whistle like them. Just like this picture, you may not be able to see clearly because of the, the speed of the in internet may be um, slow. Now, in fact, we can see the bubble, the micro bubble shown on the ultrasound. So this is the fibroid with the uh, micro bubble. We are going from one side to another side of the fibroid. So after this before, we, uh, we do the um, high flow abrasion. Now, after the high flow abrasion, we can see, for example, this area is the endometrium. And we can see most of the area that's supposed to be uh, shown up by the micro bubble, no longer show any micro bubble. Now, in this way, we are assessing that by our visual by eye is that there might be 80%, 90% of the fibro being ablated. But still, I consider the way we are assessing is not accurate enough. That's why for the time being, many uh, in China, they are not only, they have done a pre-operative um, ultrasound to showing the blood supply of the adenomyosis, for example, this one. And one day after the high food treatment, they do the ultrasound again. And in this way, they will assess the amount of adenomyosis being ablated, like 80%, 90%. So in this way, and they will compare the success of the operation. But theoretically, with neural net, we are able to use computers calculation the micro bubble, and to be able to do exactly the same thing at what we are doing with high food. So this another area of development will save the expense of the MRI, which in Hong Kong it costs a thousand American dollars to do one MRI. Now, of course, the other application like placenta, accreta, cesarean section, scar, pregnancy, abdominal endometriosis, are the applications that focus ultrasound are doing in gynecology, have been well you know, studied in some of the center in China. And I don't have the experience, but they are feasible. What impressed me is the future use of high flow in cancer. My friend from Shanghai, able to show me, there's a case of Lyomal sarcoma that keep on recurring. You can see the abdominal wound, there's so many scars already. Doctor doesn't want to go in to remove it and because it caused another scar as well as a uh, long time stay in the hospital for this lady. But the high full treatment, you can see, they just a few hours, they ablate the Lyomal sarcoma even though it's not a curative method, but for this lady, the quality of life. 
being away from the hospital and without a growing loud mouth sarcoma is much more than what um, <clears throat> they expected than a surgery. And then another lady with uh, stage four breast cancer and abrasion that helped the lady just a few hours out of the hospital. Another lady with subcapsular, uh, there's a cancer recurrent, high flu can do the trick. Even though not a cure, but palliative. I must share with you another lady that I've done uh, together with Professor Janin. It's a lady who is only 35 and she complained of recurrent urinary tract infection and dysmenorrhea. MRI show she have adenomyosis. It extends into the bladder, causing bladder endometriosis. There's the cystoscopy. You can see the uh, bladder endometriosis. My urologist consider if I just re remove the bladder endometriosis while the um, adenomyosis is still there, she keep on recurring. So we use high food to deal with the adenomyosis of the uterus and deal with the border between the bladder and the mitosis as well as the laboring adenomyosis. The symptom improved a lot. There's no more recurrent urinary tract infection. It's our plan that she can get pregnant as what she wish. And so that during the uh, cesarean section, hopefully we get the baby out, lower seven cesarean, and then we remove the bladder and the mitosis. We hope this is one of the early cases we can extend our so-called application of high flow in complication, complicated cases like that. The last thing I want to say, yes, I mean, waste contamination. In Hong Kong, we have 200 tons of medical waste every year. All over the world, in China, America, and India, they contribute up to billion tons of waste product or general disposal waste. And that's caused the problem. Incinerator and this unwanted disposal resulting in flooding, bushfire, mist in the city. So that's what we want. We hope we contribute to less medical waste. Finally, during this coronavirus epidemic, I learned one thing, is that the focus ultrasound surgery may be potentially useful for us to provide digital healthcare development in gynecology. Not only we can provide surgery using 5G, hopefully we have it in Hong Kong, and we can operate patients in the distance, and we can also teach people learning high food, and we can also monitor people high food to teach to operate using digital um, surface. So I think that is one thing we should think of that no other surgery can do that except focus ultrasound surgery. So it's not the end of the focus ultrasound surgery. It will be just the beginning. That's what I say. And like many people will say, disease that harm require therapy that harm less. That's what um, I put it in my clinic and I welcome people to give me suggestions how we can advance focus ultrasound surgery in gynecology. This is my email address and thank you for listening.